Hello, and you're listening to FP Cast, the official, except no fraudulent substitutes, podcast for fruitless pursuits. I'm Luke. And I'm Jacinta. And this week we're talking about movies, movies, television, collectibles, collectibles, video games. Supernovas. Supers and Novas. Mm, just the one supernova. Yes. Not multiple supernovas. No. Though we have been to multiple. Well, y- and yes. And we went to this one on multiple days. Well, so, maybe there are supernovas. Who am I to say? There was one in Sydney last week. Oh, there was. So yes. there. We didn't go to that, though. No, we didn't. No. Just Perth. Just, just Perth, Perth supernova. And we just got back. Like, we got back. Literally. Like, five minutes ago. Yes. yes. So, we this left, is... We uh, left the cosplay competition and came straight back here. Fresh out of the oven. This bun is a little bit uh, warm. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're warm handling buns. this like, who podcast... Who doesn't like warm buns? You might want to put on some gloves. Mm. Some ear gloves. Yeah, right. Some ear mitts. Ear mitts. Ear mitts. Yeah, okay. On your ears, because this one is uh, so piping hot. Roasty, toasty, warm. It's uh, going to burn my tongue. <laughs> but isn't it going in your ears, not your mouth? Oh, well, it's coming out of my mouth and into oh, their ears. Okay. You cool. know, like when they say, from your mouth to God's ears? And this is from God's mouth oh. to your ears. <sighs> what? Well, no, I'm, I'm not talking about, like, you know, theology where there is just, like, one God. I mean, mm-hmm. like, if what if, you know, because what about, I like the idea that there's gods of small things, like everything, yeah. there's a god for everything. Mm. I could be a god of something, all right? The god of something. The god of something, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Very inspiring start to proceedings. Well, they always are the day out, the evening of a con, aren't they? Because we... Uh, it's a tricky one. We've been uh, at the convention centre for... A very, very long time, from Just, like yeah. 10 a.m. to, to 6 p.m. Two days, two in, a days row. in a row. And uh, a little bit tired. I am on to my uh, third Red Bull for the day. So if, if my heart stops during the podcast, then you, you, you're listening to history here, folks. That's true. Mm. Do you think that would make the paper? Might make the community news. Yeah, maybe, maybe we're not quite famous enough to get into the actual paper, but you know, with you know Brexit and everything going on, yeah, uh, we're probably not a priority. Interesting uh, thing. I want to talk about fame and the sort of ideas of fame as we talk about this because that, that's something that I've really thought about. You know, because mm. th- this is something that has assembled people who are, were really famous at one point were on like really successful TV shows people that have, have been in really popular movies and current movies now to people that have millions of subscribers on YouTube to mm. local people and it's really interesting to see just how that seething mass of attendees kind of treats those various groups and mm. how much of a big deal it is. Uh, to those various groups. And you realise that fame is uh, a lot of nonsense, really. Of course it is. Yeah. It just moves with the times. Yeah, but even... Th- yeah, I know. We're going we're gonna to talk mm. about all those sorts of things. But uh, I, I think that's maybe a, a good starting point to say that, yes, we went to Supernova, Supernova Perth. It's a big uh, pop culture convention. It's the first pop culture convention that came to Perth. Mm. It uh, brings in a lot of the same uh, celebrities and TV people that go and tour around the US shows, so it's quite a big show. Hmm. Yeah, we want to give our thoughts on it, and of course you might be thinking, well, I'm not in Perth, I didn't go to this or whatever, you know, how is this relevant to me? I I want to hear you do movie reviews, stuff like that, But uh, which we will continue doing next week. But um, I think I want to talk about and we'll inevitably talk about just conventions as a whole and that kind of experience and our mm. sort of musings on yeah, that. Yeah, most so, people have been to a convention, so they'll be able to relate on some level. Yeah, and I, and I think um, it feels to me that there is a shift, and I don't know if it's because I've changed or the convention scene's changed, but it felt different, and it continues to feel different. Like... We've talked about our own sort of um, excitement and energy not being there as much as mm. it maybe it has in previous years. I don't know if that's because of the show, because of us. But, um, yeah, I mean, 
Where do we start? Like, they didn't have uh, a huge star this year. They were going to have Gal Gadot, which mm. would have been really big. Yeah, instead their, their next biggest star was Travis Fimmel, who's obviously in Vikings and in the new uh, Warcraft movie, which, you know, I guess that's a, that's a good get. I don't watch Vikings. I did enjoy Warcraft. Uh, I was thinking of getting him to sign uh, a Warcraft book that I bought on the weekend, but his autographs were like 70 bucks, and yeah. he's not worth that to me. So I just went, well, okay, no. Yeah, okay. I think uh, we, we talked about this when we did the Oz Comic Con show, and I feel like the, the show's not just a sort of... Well, the show is not like a sit-down meal, which they bring to you and go, here you go, we've, we've prepped this for you. It's mm-hmm. like a buffet. Mm-hmm. and you have to choose what you're going to do and what you're going to have. Yeah, and you don't have the opportunity to eat everything. Yes. Because you might explode, so you have to be a little bit choosy about where you're going to spend your time and your money. We haven't eaten yet, if you're wondering where this whole analogy has come from. Oh, my from. God, I just had, like, four Pringles because that's all I could find. I'm so hungry. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I feel like you have to create your own adventure. You have mm. to create your own narrative. And for people that, like you said, you know, might be huge Viking fans, or mm. whatever, or huge um, Team Wolf fans. There's only one Team Wolf, in my opinion, Michael J. Fox. But, uh, you know, those sorts of people I, it would have had that thrill of meeting them, and, and I think that would be amazing. Like, I remember when I got to meet Carrie Fisher mm. uh, you know, or Eliza Dushku or something mm. like that. That I was really Jamie, cool. Jamie Bamber or John Barrowman. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's your experience. That's your adventure. For Comic-Con, I was able to go, well, there's no one here I want to see. I, I was disappointed with the guests, but then I got the tattoo, and that was my adventure. That was mm. my narrative for the weekend. And I couldn't really find my adventure this weekend. Mm. I couldn't find that thing that the, the siren's call... That was luring me to adventure. Hmm. My only kind of little sort of blip of a highlight, not wanting to undersell these particular guests, but I went to a panel yesterday, uh, which was about tropes in entertainment, and it featured um, two uh, Australian personalities called uh, Hex and Barjo. They're on a, a video game TV show called Good Game. And, and uh, also they have the most, uh, and I don't know if it's just the podcast version of the show but mm. it is the most they're the most popular in australia mm. if you go to the itunes store yeah um i went to their panel yesterday i was you know I'm, I'm at the convention taking photos that's sort of my role and i took a couple of snaps uh one turned out quite nice i, I put it on um twitter hex retweeted it and i went look you know what that is actually quite a nice photo i would like to meet them uh they were there signing copies of a book that they'd written i didn't really want the book so i was like you know what i'm gonna print out this photo, I'm going to get them to sign the photo, and uh, that was my kind of little adventure. I didn't think that I was going to get to do it because they are only going to be signing for such a limited time, but I got it done. It was cool. It was, like, even more special because it was my picture that I'd taken and they were kind of, like, appreciative of that, and I was like, awesome. So that was cool. Well, let's focus on the guests then to begin with because um, I agree that they were some of the most interesting people there, even though some people go, well, they're not, you know, big film actors or anything like that mm. but they're interesting people and within the context of the industry they really are like really super positive role models and they're very articulate and very intelligent yeah. um and if you go to their like their panel was kind of one of those more sort of boutique panels it was in a smaller conference room it was packed like it, these guys are really quite popular um but you know you go to the panels of the big stars and the questions are dumb the answers are dumb and you kind of just get used to it all just being kind of dumb and then you go to these smaller panels and everyone is so articulate and clever and saying very smart uh influential things and you're just like holy shit is this is this what this is supposed to be like yeah i think it's quite difficult sometimes with the hollywood stars because look there are people that are absolute entertainers Mm. that come in and just own the stage and really run it but um like billy boyd or i mean john barrowman before they're just they will give you a hundred percent more than what you i guess gave them as far as your question goes but uh, yeah i do find some of the guests where you think well this is someone who my only interaction with their work is them saying things written by other people mm. i don't have a sense of who they are and you just go there's no real personality here that's you know engaging me mm to that point like i'm not learning anything they're not sort of um expanding my mind about anything Mm. and um a lot of the times their seriousness about stuff like i hate those 
um, you know, when they get really serious and go, oh, but really, it's the fans that we should thank uh, because, you know, you guys keep this going and without <laughs> you. And it's like, fuck off. It's so cliche. And I know it probably does come from a sincere place. I, I know they probably do mean this. But um, fans don't need empowering like that. Fans are fucking foolish, as we saw throughout the course of mm. uh, all of these panels and things. Like, fans don't know what they want. Mm. Like, let artists be artists and, and you put stuff out there and we'll choose whether we want to consume it or not. Yeah. But, um, yeah, or talking about an issue, like talking about something that we should all, like some sort of cry to action or whatever, and you think you're not doing this in a compelling way and there's mm. no depth to what you're saying. So, yeah, I find I find that a little bit difficult. It's hard to find that uh, thing that really engages me. So mm. I didn't actually go to many panels this weekend. Um, I'd seen James Masters before, so I didn't bother with him uh, this time. I didn't see... Uh, I didn't see Sean Astin. He was actually one of the guests I was kind of more interested in, but he was on at the same time as the cosplay, and I sort of prioritised that over him. I did go to the um, Holly Marie Coombs and Brian Krauss panel, which was it was pretty entertaining. Like, if I didn't have other stuff to go and do, I probably would have stayed in there for most of the time. Um, I think they came a couple of years ago uh, as well, yeah. but I remember their panel being a lot more kind of wooden, like Holly was not really kind of giving yeah. a lot. yeah. But this one, it was just loose and free and they were joking and and it was actually kind of almost uh, nice to see it as a counterpoint from the first one because I sort of walked away going, oh, God, they're really boring. Um, but it must have just been a bad day because they were really great this time. It's, it's an incredibly weird interaction mm. and it's a sort of forced, strange interaction when you think about mm. it. Like you would think, oh, you know, being famous and meeting people who are your fans and vice versa would be a really rewarding thing, mm. but it feels very, very awkward and, mm. and sort of depressing at times. And it's kind of, yeah, it's a weird interaction because it shouldn't be about that. Like whether it's an actor, musician or whatever, it, you would think it like it's the work, isn't it? That's where you interact. You mm. interact with the work and that's the experience. Something about that awkward Q&A thing because I feel like it, it's sort of a little bit dissatisfying for, for both sides in a way mm. because um, they're getting asked just absolute bullshit questions. And the that's where someone, you mentioned Billy Boyd before, like someone like him who wasn't at this particular convention, they take a dodgy question and they turn it into, they give the answer that they want to give. They tell mm. the story that they want to tell. They don't get stuck on that question. And um, I think that's the real skill, mm. and that's Jason what Isaacs makes it was very good at that. Yeah, as well. he was. He really impressed me. All the people with, that um, you're mentioning are not American, by the way. There's a <laughs> little pattern there. Because he was on Bonnie. What was like Ginny Weasley? Yeah, is that who he was with? Yeah, so he sort of had to kind of take control a little bit because she was not because she's a woman because she's so young. Okay, um, well. and uh, he he did so, such a great job. That was a good fun panel, and I have no interest in Harry Potter, so <laughs> it was uh, pushing yeah. shit uphill for me. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. We watched a bit of Shannon Doherty, hmm. and um, I have great empathy for Shannon Doherty. What mm. I enjoyed about it was the kind of human side that came out. Uh, we need to talk about what happened. Yeah. I think we should because there's an interesting sort of insight to it. Yeah, yeah. She um, she was photographed, or we don't know by who, uh, at doing her talk at the Sydney Supernova last yeah. week. And um, they weren't flattering pictures, which is uh, really just as much the photographer, right? Well, it is, um, unless, look, um, when I'm taking, like, I've taken photos of Shannon Doherty before, and I only put up the ones that make her look good, because I feel like, you know, that should be my job yeah. to make her look good. Um, but I, I, I understand, I guess, with this particular photographer, if they are sort of a freelancer, they're just putting photos basically in a wire agency for news outlets just to pick off, and... If they go, okay, there's an unflattering photo of Shannon Doherty, someone might pick this up and run a story about it, and then I get my money. Yeah. So that's that's sort of where they're coming from. As I look, it's shitty, and I don't agree with it, but that's I guess that's where they're coming from. Yeah, and I, I think that you point a camera at anyone and you are responsible for, like, mm. making them 
feel good really mm. like isn't that the whole deal that's why i hate having my photo taken because I, like i think people are so haphazard and then with social media it's just out there mm. and if you've got any sort of um insecurities about anything and that's all you'll see yeah yeah you can make you feel like shit mm. and so uh, this, it was published in a uk newspaper and um the article well uh, online actually mm. it was an online article and the article was taken down about 10 hours later and it's very mean-spirited about her appearance look how she looks now and and the um thing that the person didn't take into account is that uh shannon doherty sadly is currently battling breast cancer mm. and has been for a year and, um, you know, looking like she did uh, when she was on Beverly Hills 90210 a billion years ago probably isn't even a, a priority uh, right now. So it was a really shitty thing, and she, she talked quite frankly about that. And, um, you know, and this is something that's very fresh as well and talked about crying in the hotel for a couple of days. And, uh, you know, so it really put that... Um, human side on it and and she did talk about how you know those difficulties in keeping relevant when you Hmm. being an actor and stuff like that she probably had about you know 150 or so people there at the at the panel yeah um and yeah it's kind of difficult but then at the same time um there's not a lot of from that experience Hmm. uh, uh, of her work and what she's talking about that is easily sort of relatable or, or kind of entertaining to me. It was kind of a downer panel for the part that I was there. Um, you didn't sort of leave it, it feeling like Stokes. And I understand if people mm. are Charmed fans and things like that, there's even that sort of difficulty with, I always feel that with the Firefly people when they talk about the fact that for those guys, it was nine months of their lives, mm. like what, 10 years ago or yeah. whatever. So for people to be like, oh, we, you know, we love you, we love you because of that, that's an amazing thing, it still can't be incredibly fulfilling mm. for you. But then, look, go back to Billy Boyd. He'll, he'll talk about Lord of the Rings. He'll tell you as many stories as you want about all the crazy pranks and stuff they did, mm. and he does it with, like, grace and dignity, and he's funny, and you just go, yeah, he understands that this is what they're into, and if that's what you want to talk about, sure, yeah. that's what I'm here for. I'm here for 45 minutes to talk about a film I did. And if yeah. you, I think if you think about it that way, mm. great. So um, I thought it was interesting, like, yeah, you think, like, we are so small with what we do with this podcast. Like, it's just tiny. There's times I've thought about, well, what if we were to do a live show somewhere or something like that? And you realize, realistically, you're probably going to get, like, 15 people. Because here's, like, Bajo and Hex, Mm. who are the biggest in Australia Mm -hmm. in terms of this sort of stuff. And they get a few hundred. And then you think, um, we had a guy from Game Grumps, uh, Ross, who's from Perth. I went and saw his panel with um, his partner, Commander Holly, who's a, a prominent YouTuber in her own right and cosplayer. And, um, you know, they had more than Shannon. They had a couple of hundred. But you think, you know, these are people that have millions mm. of subscribers. These are people that have um, billions of YouTube views. And, and then there was, like, a panel about um, indie comics and how to write your own, et cetera, how to, how to do indie comics. And I just said all that terribly, not how to write, how to, how to self-publish mm. is what it was about, mm. not how to write your own comic or how <laughs> to do sit you indie down comics. and tell you how to it write It was a- about how to self-publish. And yep. there were like 11 people watching, I counted. Um, one was playing on the DS. Uh, one was reading a book. Mm-hmm. Someone else was going through their magic cards. There was an old lady that looked like she was in the wrong place. Uh, so yeah, it's tricky. It is really ruthless. Um, when they got rid of Gal Gadot, I need to get rid of her, but she's busy making, uh, movies and things. Um, they bring in Negasonic Teenage Warhead mm. and, um, the Colossus dude yep. from Deadpool. And I thought, you know, Deadpool has been a huge movie this year, made a huge amount of money. Um, a lot of love from the fans. There is Deadpool's all Deadpool imagery all over this con. And um, they weren't getting anybody, you know? They were sitting up there. Mm. It was because they're not they're not anyone, really. You know what I mean? Like, people, like sure, if they bring out Ryan Reynolds, people are going to be excited about that. Yeah, but, but, you know, they were a, a prominent part of... Uh, and two fantastic highlight characters in, yeah. in a really but big film for the year. But they're the characters. Yeah. Yeah, unless they're going to walk out in those suits. People yeah, don't really it give was a shit. right. It's, I'm almost felt really sorry for... Um, Brianna, who plays Negasonic, and I'm sure she doesn't need me to feel sorry for her. She probably had a great time uh, at the con. But I mean just the fact that you almost go, like, 
people are going to expect you to have that hair for the rest mm. of your life. Because if you, if you were sitting there under that poster with that hair and with black lipstick, mm. you would go, oh, i got to go get my photo yeah. with her. i got to go and meet her. And look, I'm not saying, like, no one... You know, people were going in, but it wasn't a steady flow. It wasn't like... Um, actually, it's like voice actors were getting a lot of oh, people. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, like Troy Baker and... That was um, crazy. Some of the... Uh, I think Dragon Ball and Naruto guys, something mm. like that. I'm not sure. And um, uh, Finn the Human from Adventure yeah. Time was there. Mm. So yeah, they were they were getting a lot of love. So it's it's really interesting. And then you've got the um, American comic artists who were here, mm. and they were almost in terms of the positioning of the show, almost kind of ghetto ghettoized. They were at the far side of all the indie stalls. Mm. Um, sort of facing the back wall. Like, I almost didn't go around that corner when we first went through. I thought we'd done it all. Yeah, the only reason that you would probably find them is because you were going to get something to eat and then turn around and went, oh, my God, okay. Yeah, and, and they were like Art Adams. We had Frank Cho. Um, there was a significant a lot of people there, and um, they had a very quiet time. Mm. And, and I sort of thought, well, why are they tucked here? And, and you know, it's comics are like the other one's called comic con and it's just not about comics Mm. like people don't i I think people are really um i don't know are they kind of alienated by comics or kind of frightened of them it's even the way that they were set up it was very difficult when you think okay here's this guy and, and he's a very like frank cho a very prominent um american comic book artist and he's got like four prints on his table just four, mm. and it says prints 20 bucks, mm. well, you know, which is a deal. Yeah. But you go around into Artist Alley, and with all the, like, a- a- um, amateur and independent artists, and they've got 50 different prints if you if, of every character mm. you like from TV, film, etc. and they've got clear signs on how much everything is, and they're doing commissions and yeah. all that sort of stuff. It's just so much clearer mm. that you think... It's like... Um, I'm a big fan of Ashley Wood, uh, artist, and also um, 3A Toys. I love the 3A Toys stuff. Um, it's something that you have to usually pre-order on the 3A website at uh, Full Moon, Crossroads. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult to get the stuff that you want, huge aftermarket prices. He had a stall a couple of years ago mm. where he was actually um, selling figures there and customizing them and stuff. It was awesome. I was really excited he was coming back. I was hoping he had a stall. Turns out, no, he was just with these other artists and um, he turned up like kind of late in the day on both days Mm. and it was really just a signing opportunity, which is great, but I wanted to buy stuff from Mm. him and he had an empty table. His booth was just literally black with one poster that said Ashley Wood. Yeah, like I don't have any 3A stuff, but if they had even just had a stall set up just showcasing the work. Like, I love looking at them. I don't own any, yeah. but I, I love looking at all the all those figures. And, and it's not that niche when you think of the licenses that these... Mm. Like, he does um, his own interpretations of Iron Man. He's done an Iron Man figure. Yeah. He's done a, a Doctor Doom figure. Um, I think he's done a Spider-Man figure. Mm. If I could, like, walk in and buy one of those. But it's just not the, the way they sell those toys. Like, you again, you have to jump mm. through a fiery hoop I at the crossroads. I think he's done the new Ninja Turtles as well, and they're really cool. Yeah, there's 3A and 3-0, and I think he's oh, maybe both, it's... but I'm not sure. Okay, maybe they're 3-0. Like, yeah. Okay. But, um, no, his stuff's amazing, and I, I, I kind of, like, let me give you money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's yeah. no opportunity to... And, um, you know, that was one of those funny things about the, the convention, like, in, in terms of the way the space was handled and the setup, it, it felt like there was less stuff to me. Yeah, I guess uh, it was it was interestingly done. I think we sort of half criticised, half applauded Oz Comic Con for having their big panels actually on the convention floor, which in some ways made the rest of it feel a little bit more crowded. Um, But even Supernova, they had their big panels still on the convention floor and some of the other ones were in the theatre, like they had Troy Mm. Baker in the theatre, but then they had, you know, everyone else in the the convention floor. Um, Travis Fermel was in the theatre. Everyone else was on the convention floor. So it was just the way they had it set up was a bit strange. And they just don't make people comfortable. It's just not inviting enough. There was mm. more empty space, like wider corridors and things, which is good. It wasn't mm. nearly as shoulder to shoulder as it has been in the past. But you look at like those food areas, which have 
half a dozen tables mm. and which take up about a sixth of the space mm. around the food area and everybody's sitting on the concrete floor. Yeah. Oz well, Comic Con put a lot of chairs around the stuff, didn't they? They did, yeah. yeah. They sort of made it a lot more comfortable and I thought that was really good. And But they, they also, this time, they didn't have any of those... They had a VR setup, mm. so they had a big v screen um, with the Vive, I think it was, and um, people were playing that. But, you know, your chances of getting a turn mm. would have been pretty low unless you were willing to wait quite a bit of time. But there didn't seem to be as many sort of walk-up experiences or sort of set pieces. Mm. And um, we'd be, I've been sort of erroneously excited about the idea of them having an Ecto-1, and it turns out it's like a fan's car, which just has yeah. Ghostbusters stickers it on it. It was a Kia. Yeah. And that was, that was fucking disappointing as shit. And it's on display, and you're like, you know, good for that fan, but there's, there's stickers. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty lame. They had, um, oh, something the 501st did have, so the Star Wars fan group um, who dress up as, you know, Darth Vader and Stormtroopers and all of that sort of thing. Um, they had a scout trooper and a full-size speeder bike, which was uh, fucking amazing because they're my favourites. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That and was, some that Ewoks. Was uh, yeah, some like, life-size Ewoks. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Mm. So, yeah, that was like the best kind of thing to go and look at. But, um, yeah, it wasn't... There was in the program it said that they were doing like uh, like a Suicide Squad tattoo Booth, which which is, must have been Sydney. Which just temporary tattoos, um, but it wasn't. It wasn't. Didn't specify in the program that it was just Sydney, but it wasn't. It wasn't there, and I, I'd actually kind of been looking forward to that because I thought yeah. that'd be fun to fun to get a, a dumb Captain Boomerang tattoo. Yeah, you need those little things. You need those little like walk up experiences. Like um, I never would have done it myself, but Courtney was doing it, and I was like, oh, okay, well I'll come and join. Um, it, it, they had a big area for Magic the Gathering, mm. and um, there were our iPads set up when you could play the new version of the game um, on that. And if you won, they gave you a like track on hat. Mm. So. Um, you know, that was like 10 minutes of doing something different and then mm. we got a hat at the end and it was like, oh, well, that's kind of fun. Like, yeah. that's different. At least that's sort of something, you know. Mm. But, yeah, that's what I kind of needed. 10 I, minutes out of like 20 hours. I did enjoy <laughs> the indie artist area, the artist alley. There's some, mm. um, obviously, I've, I've been involved with the Perth Comics community and, and their events and stuff and there are people that I've met through there who had stalls and they were doing um, really cool stuff. Mm. So it was nice to be able to support some of them and buy some things and uh, probably, yeah, my favourite thing at the con was getting the, the commission from um, mm. Solanya, which was uh, she painted me this beautiful watercolour A5 ray picture and um, it, it's fantastic. So that was something sort of more personal that I was able to take away. Mm. And um, I really enjoyed that. Like, that was fun to sort of, you know, pay for the commission and then go away and know that at the end of the day I'd be able to go and pick this yeah. thing up. So, um, yeah, that, that was kind of a, a highlight. But um, I don't know, like, I'm mean, too old. I, a, a friend has said that it's doesn't go because he said it's basically like a pop vinyl clearance house and <laughs> kind of is to a degree. Yeah. I mean, and I didn't even feel there was that many stalls there this time by comparison. Maybe there were. Yeah, it, it didn't feel as, I don't know, it didn't feel as varied. Like there's always, even at Oz Comic Con, there was a, you know, there was a stall we kept going back to and getting blind box figures and, and uh, that sort of thing. But as far as the sort of shopping experience... This time when it wasn't kind of super satisfying? No, I didn't find that thing that I was like, oh, my God. Mm. And again, I don't know, is that me? It's always too early in the year, too. There's always all this stuff that's going to come out yeah. for movies that I'm anticipating, but they're not out yet. Mm. Um, and I guess it's been, you know, it's been like, what, four years since we've been, like, covering it properly. Like, we've obviously been going to the con for longer than that, but it's almost a bit like... It was so exciting at first, and now it's a little bit sort of same old, same old. It's like, oh, you know, I wonder what cosplayers are going to turn up. It's like it's all the same cosplayers yeah. doing all the same sorts of things. Yeah. And people don't... Um, it's very Wait. rare that there's a really, like, exciting cosplay that you go, oh, holy shit, it's that guy, or... We are no, really whatever. spoiled, and yeah, we take yeah. a lot for granted now because I, I think I said this way back when, 
you know, when I, I'd met Carrie Fisher, that idea when I was a kid growing up in, like, Canberra in mm. the late 70s, early 80s, and I'm watching those Star Wars films for the first time, the idea that I could actually meet her in person and get an autograph or something like that just seemed impossible. Mm. Like, I'd be more likely to meet the Easter Bunny. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. it just seemed like America was this magical amazing Fancy, far faraway away land and mm. that we were by comparison um living in this like crazy third world country which uh <laughs> now i know the absolute opposite is true <laughs> but um yeah so i had said this to you today i passed because uh, i was like a huge um comic fan as a teenager and very much into indie stuff and very much got into that whole original Ninja Turtle stuff before the cartoon and everything, just before the cartoon, to be fair, but really loved that stuff. And um, today I just walked past, and on the wall there's this um, Ninja Turtle comic signed by Kevin Eastman, you know, one of the duo that created the Turtles originally. And I thought, I had no interest in buying it. It was $40, and I just thought, God, like there was a time in my life when the idea of holding Mm. or owning something like that, like a Turtles comic signed by this guy, would have just been amazing. Mm -hmm. And I would have been like, I'll give you $400 for it. Yeah. And And it's just like, it's 40 bucks, it's there, and I'm looking at it going, I think that's one of the newer ones. I'm not interested in that Mm. um, there. Yeah, and it's just such a sort of overwhelming smorgasbord of shit to buy that, yeah, you just become numb to everything that you're looking at. I think, like, last year maybe there was a signed Jeremy Renner picture for 60 bucks, which is cheap as shit for his autograph, and I just went, "Mm, nah, which I've now obviously regret, but, you know, at the time I was just like, well, you know, that's $60 that I could spend on something else. I was like, Jesus Christ. I was going to go meet Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Uh, That was the person I thought, yeah, I want to go see that. I really like that character. That was cool. But then it was just like... There's, again, it's the reality. It's like going, do I want to pay 50 bucks for what's probably going to be a pretty awkward experience for both of us? Mm. Get this picture that God knows what I'm going to do with it. I don't have enough room to frame half the stuff that I've got. It'll probably go into a folder and be a memento. It'll be more, oh, I remember when we did that mm. as opposed to anything else. Mm. Was she 50 bucks? Yeah. Wow. What is in this huge movie, you know, and they yeah, fly but down. But then I think, like... I paid 50 bucks for Sean Astin, and he's been in things. Yeah, but then I think <laughs> my... Well, like I was saying before, my enjoyment of her mm. is the work. It's yeah, watching exactly. the film. It's yeah. seeing that character in the, the role. I'd buy a pop vinyl off her. Great. Mm. But, um... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I got, I got an autograph from Sean Astin, not necessarily because I really wanted to meet... Sean Aston, and he's kind of, he's just kind of an awkward sort of guy. Um, I got him to sign my Memphis Belle Blu-ray, which is one of my favourite movies, my favourite movie as a kid, and I really love the idea of having a Memphis Belle thing signed by Sean Aston, and that's why I got it, not really to meet him, just kind of have the autograph. I'm really disappointed you didn't do my thing that I suggested that you do. It was the worst, Luke. When you go and meet him. I thought it would be really, like hilarious if um Jacinda went up like and he didn't he didn't know what you were gonna mm-hmm. sign and um he's inquisitive as most uh hobbits are mm-hmm. and he'd be like um oh have you got a photo or and then you would just go hang on what's that Memphis smell and pull out the blu-ray and put it on the table and he would laugh so hard that his little hobbit sides would split mm. uh taters would just go all over the floor and they'd have to send him up to the um, cosplay repair booth and sew up his sides again. And you would you would be known. You would be legend. Talk about community news. Put that in the community news. Uh, local podcaster splits Hobbit sides. <laughs> Taters everywhere. Taters everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Speaking so, of the local community newspaper, no. did, did I tell you this really quick diversion? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Um, tell that story. That's a good story. Yeah, yeah. They... Must only, like, review one film. And this is... I'm in a... Um, a well-off area. A well-off area, yeah. yeah. And uh, they do a kind of wrap-up of other movies' reviews, mm. but they don't write them themselves. They paste in quotes, mm-hmm. um, you know, what the critics are saying about this and that. And 
they clearly don't read all the time what they paste in because uh, in this quite conservative newspaper, mm. um, they quoted that Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows was a torturous mindfuck of a film, mm. <laughs> which I thought was uh, pretty fantastic. I'm and look, sure all the pensioners would have loved reading that over brunch. Uh, we enjoyed it, but uh, I don't know. Are they pensioners here? Hmm. I don't know if they're pensioners here. Well, they're, they're old money. Yeah. <laughs> they probably don't need a pension because they have so much fucking money. That's what I'm saying, baby. Mm. Sorry, yeah. So Sean Astin, what a guy. Yeah. No, he was he was nice enough. Uh, yeah, bit awkward. I sort of, we didn't really chat for very much because I was like, yeah, I don't I don't care that much, Sam Wise. I'm just, just sign my thing and then I'm going to go away. Yeah, so that was kind of my main purchase i think i think that was the most that i spent yeah because money on you, you have to like there's what we're talking about before there's that skill and they need it and you realize that we need it too you have to answer the question that you want to be asked regardless mm. of what you were actually asked and i felt that when we met barjo and hex because mm. barjo goes Are you guys big gamers and um i I'm like sh- nope <laughs> oh, yeah i went not really and he went oh where i should have said oh no we um we host a general pop culture podcast mm. that would have been a, a, a conversation starter yeah well i did i, I did, gave him a pretty firm conversation finisher yeah well i did throw a bit of a bone in there and said well you know to kind of play warcraft a little bit and he sort of went okay and i was like no come on yeah engage no they had to uh they, to they, jet they, yeah. through the tail of that line very quickly so we were lucky that we even got eye contact i think that's true they were um ready to go i think everyone was yeah, you know, everyone was a bit tardy today. Mm. I think I might have had, all had a bit of too much fun last night. <laughs> and, well, um, they had that. Uh, there was an after party last night that they were hosting. Yeah. So they may have may well have had a very good night last night. Do you like me doing the older sort of dad thing of um, kicking those teenagers out of the line? That... Oh yeah, I was keeping an eye on them. Yeah. They were kind of getting their way into. It's like no, mate. Everyone has been waiting a very long yeah. time. Get and out then of they, here. Um, sort of. Kind of like they were going to go in front of us, and I walked directly in front of that mm. dude, and then um, they snuck in. But there were these two young girls. They weren't going to say anything. And just like Jason Isaac sticking up for poor old Ginny Weasley, <laughs> yeah. I turn around and go, I believe uh, they were behind us, and mm. they were next. Um, and he was like, oh, it's just sort of space, and I took it. And I was like, yeah, well, the line Get out of the space, curls fam. around. <laughs> it starts there, and he sort of hovered a bit, and then they went. And I was like, yeah, teenager defeat. <laughs> Woohoo! Take that, teens. Teen. Uh, oh, God, they could have been teen wolves. I was playing with fire there. Oh, damn. And by fire, I mean fur. Wait until the sun goes down. I guess those Lock uh, the doors. teen wolves have fire in their bellies, right? I don't really know how the whole wolf teen thing works. I think they're pretty voracious. Okay. I think it's kind of like, you know, when hair starts growing in strange places mm. when you're getting like a teenager. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, it's, but it keeps growing, mm. I think is the difference. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I've seen, I don't watch Teen Wolf, but I've seen pictures of that Tyler Hoechlin guy. Yeah. And then when he came out, like I expected him to be like... A dreamboat. A dreamboat. You expected to swoon. Yeah. And he walked out and I just sort of went... Hmm, no. Apparently he was in Everybody Wants Some, and I've w- just watched that. Oh, like, really? I had no idea who he was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I didn't even get to hear him... Um, Shapeshifter, I changeling, I didn't get to hear him answer any of his uh, questions because I was taking some photos, and then we got asked to uh, asked to leave. So there was a uh, very limited time of taking photos of Tyler Hoechlin. We weren't allowed to take photos of Travis Fimmel, which, whatever... And um, we obviously weren't allowed to take photos of Shannon Doherty for obvious yeah, reasons. Yeah, and that's fair enough. Previously. She's got a really good excuse. Yeah. That's great. I don't know what Travis F- Fimmel, Fimmel, Fimmel? He's for Australian. It's got to be Fimmel, right? Fimmel, mate. Fimmel, Fimmel. Fucking Fimmel, mate. Fimmel can't be in our potato squad. Oh, I reckon he might be a bit. I, we didn't watch his panel. Courtney did. Uh, he said he was quite ocker. Okay. Yeah, mm. and said that, um, you know, his impression was that perhaps uh, Fimi or Fimo might have been a little bit stoned or might have made a reference to, mm. like, that, you know, the Vikings. Bit of puff, puff, puff. You know? Yeah, right. 420, blaze it up, Viking style! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what else did you spend your money on? 
Uh, I bought... I didn't buy that much, really. Uh, the, the thing that I was really impressed at was uh, because I play, uh, you know, sporadically Dungeons and & Dragons. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a fucking great team of Dungeons & Dragons players, which includes people that listeners would know, a good old uh, um, Hector Weenus mm-hmm. from Book Was Better is the wizard in our group. I'm a, a warlord, a half-elf warlord. Uh, Suzanne, uh, who's been on a lot of shows, is the dungeon master. And we've got a, a couple of other players. Also, um, Paris and Zach, who have both been on Book Was Better. They play with us um, occasionally. It, it's, it's, it's great. A lot of fun. Uh, it, it's really, we just get really drunk. <laughs> and by we, I mean pretty much just Hector and I get really mm. drunk and never remember what happened. But um, the, the company called Level Up Dice who do amazing sets of dice, uh, which are, you know, your D20s, your D4s, and you looked at some D6s as well, but did I mention D10s, D12s, all that stuff that you would need. And they do them uh, with very exacting standards. These are very high-end dice. And they do uh, metal dice, um, like copper, steel, aluminium, um, and they do precious gemstones, Dice, amethyst, obsidian, all this sort of stuff. Very cool. Um, sets range from you know a hundred to two hundred dollars. And I really wanted a set, but I was not in the market this weekend to spend. Mm-hmm. But I just spent twenty five bucks. Okay. On a uh, aluminium, silvery plated uh, D twenty, and uh, it's pretty boss. And I'm really impressed with it. I'll take your word for yeah, it. Yeah, and look, you <laughs> have not been very supportive in this venture. I was very excited about getting the dice. It's and you a were dice! Like, and you were like, oh, how much are they? And I was like, reset, it's about 180. And you were like, for dice! And I was like, yeah. And you were like, but don't they just do the same thing? And I was like, yeah, but they're, it's for me, it's like a tennis player. Like, a, it takes the game seriously, gets a really good racket. And for me, like, I take my game seriously. I want a, I want luxury dice. That I is, mean, like, 0% the same thing. No, it is exactly the same no. thing. And my character lives or dies on my dice rolls, you know, so why not do it in style? And the thing is, like, I brought it home. Suzanne saw it and was like, that is just the most absolute best thing in the world. And I know that when I crack it out at the next D&D session... Mm-hmm. You know, oh my god, are some faces going to go green? And not because they feel sick, because they're jealous. Uh, I think we might be battling a green-eyed monster in that campaign, because uh, it's a luxury die. Cool. Fuck off. (laughs) (sighs) I bought... What did I buy? I bought a... A uh, bomb. (laughs) I already got one of those. I'm sitting next to it. Um, I bought on the Saturday, I got like an, I I love art of books, uh, the art of the movie. I actually had my art of civil war turn up the other day and I haven't actually looked at it yet. Um, I got the art of Warcraft, uh, which is a really great book. Actually, I was kind of, um, I just like all the concept art of the armor and stuff. Once I got it home and really started looking through it, it's, it's a pretty amazing book. And that was my Saturday purchase and I was pretty happy with that. Um, today I bought some, uh, some Hamilton fan art, which I fucking love that that is a thing that is happening now. Um, a, uh, a print of Lin-Manuel as, uh, uh, Hamilton, and I got a, a commission of Jonathan Groff as, uh, King George, which I absolutely love. It's so, so cute. Groff it up. Groff it up. So, yeah, that was my main thing, and then I got my Sean Aston autograph, and a couple of pop vinyls, and... That's pretty much it. I didn't go too crazy. I don't think they let you leave unless you buy a couple of pop vinyls. Oh yeah, God! Like they they like scan you at the door and send you back to the uh, the pop culture store. Yes, um, I feel like there was something you were saying there, which made me think that there was like a story. Oh yeah, Hamilton guy. Mm. I reckon he should have written the new Ghostbusters theme. I reckon he was your dude. He was your man because he could have made it like 
a bit camp, but he could have made it, like, legitimately cool as well. And I think, like, you wouldn't judge it so much because you would go, oh, you know, like, he gets it. It would have been tongue-in-cheek and kind mm. of fun. And he would have played around with it. And, like, you just did the, like, Mazza's castle song for Star Wars. Yeah. So, like, he would have been great. But instead, that's what we got to hear this week was the... What is it? Missy... Missy Elliott and Fallout Boy. And Fallout Boy version yeah. instead. Uh, which um, I didn't love. I like the instrumentation. Hmm. It's okay. I like Fallout Boy, so I don't really care. But, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he would have been. He would have done it if uh, he had a spare ten minutes in his day. I reckon he would make it for Ghostbusters. He's, like, from what I've heard... He, um, you know, if he likes something, hmm. he, he he makes the time. Maybe he just doesn't like Ghostbusters. Maybe he doesn't like <laughs> Ghostbusters. Or maybe he is afraid of some ghost. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, Jesus Christ, they would show the Ghostbusters trailer. Oh, um, Christ, yeah. In, in certain uh, panels and stuff. And in there's the always some shithead booing it. And, and it's, it's like, always a guy. It's like, get the f- Fuck over it, honestly. Like, don't make things about it is, you. It is the guy that you would absolutely expect to be booing <laughs> the female Ghostbusters trailer. It's like some loud, obnoxious, let's make this moment all about me, which there were a lot of happening throughout the, mm. the panels today. It was. It's like, man, if you give a... Uh, a marginalised group of people in society, if you make them feel safe, then they just turn obnoxious. Yeah. But <laughs> what I did like was every time someone booed the Ghostbusters people would trailer, cheer louder. It, there would be yeah, counter cheers. Mm. And uh, the first time we saw it, a lot of laughs, actually, considering mm. that trailer's been around for quite a long time. The jokes were still getting uh, big lols. Mm. So who knows? Uh, look, it could be worse. It could be uh, They could be driving around in a Kia. Yeah, Jesus. So, no one wants that. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, in fact, uh, well, that's the only thing we haven't talked about then is the cosplay. Mm. And uh, we watched the, like, national cosplay competition, the Madman yep. competition yesterday, which is all the really high-end stuff mm. and uh, some some really beautiful, elaborate crazy costumes yeah. so mostly anime characters though so neither of us had any idea who no they were. i didn't and they, <laughs> which kind of leads into the other thing i wanted to say was they all did skits mm. and what it reminded me of is when i was a wee lad in like mm-hmm. the early 80s in um you know year one and two and mm-hmm. stuff like that uh, i don't know if they, this still happens in schools but um you know, you could, if I wrote a play and my friends and I just decided to, you know, and by a, I wrote a play, I mean, mm-hmm. like, I, I wrote a A4 page or something yep. that would take two minutes to perform. Mm-hmm. We go, oh, we wrote a, we've got a play, can we put it on? And you get to put it on in front At of the class. assembly or something? Oh, no, no, I mean, oh, like, just, in just, front of the class. just, just, okay. like, yeah, I'd come in in the morning and go, in year one or year two, and go, like, oh, I wrote a play, can we perform it? And they go, yeah. And um, we would just get up in front of the blackboard and, mm. and, and, and perform it. Yeah. You know, no lights, no... You know, it was something we just rehearsed in recess. Mm-hmm. And I remember doing um, a Dark Crystal. Okay. So we're going, yeah. like, Chamberlain, lay down that scepter and pretending to have the, like, sort of fight hitting the rock and stuff. And I remember the, the, the very gracious but bewildered teacher sort of going, okay, <laughs> and then looking at the class and going... Did you guys um, understand that? Do you guys know what that was about? And they were like, people were like, yeah. She was like, okay, good. And that's how I felt watching the skits, <laughs> where I was just like, I have no point like where I can navigate this. Like, mm. I just don't understand anything that's happening. These characters are talking and things are happening, mm. but I don't get any of it. Like, yeah. I'm just... One of them was from, like, Hyrule Warriors or something, and I understand the concept of, like, Link... And that's about as far as I got in that whole skit. Yeah, I know who Link is. Uh, he sends me all those LinkedIn requests. Uh, no, what, do you, <laughs> what do you want <laughs> right now? <laughs> Seriously. Um, I think my favourite... Actually, the, the cosplay competition this afternoon that we went to, I really enjoyed the, the Evolution group. Yeah, that was cool. They were a group of, I don't know, well, like 10 of them or whatever. Oh, I don't know how many EV evolutions there are. I'm not a massive Pokemon fan. Um, and they'd all put together, like, kind of humanoid warrior versions of 
of all the Eevee evolutions, and it looked really good. The uh, standard of costumes, that's something that's definitely just continued to improve mm. over the years. So, like, e- everything had merit today. Mm. Like, and then we saw the general um, sort of admission cosplay mm. today. Uh, we didn't get to stick around to the end of it, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it's just the skits. It's just wretched. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I, look, and, and look, I'm glad they're there because I enjoy how wretched they are. Mm. Like, I kind of go, oh, I know I'm going to be cringing, but let, let's see it. Mm. And the thing is, it's, it's not that these people are wretched. Like, afterwards, they finish the skit and then they talk about their stuff and they're like, um, funny, noble, <laughs> you know, mm. like, down to earth, kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, this is what I did. And they talk about how they made the costume and you're like, wow, you're, you're yeah. a genius. But um, there's something about those... I think when you look at all that pop culture negativity that happens about movies where people are like, Warcraft, boo, Batman vs Superman, this stuff, shit. And then you see the stuff that fans are passionate about mm. and you're watching this like bit of anime dialogue out of context. Mm. You're just like, oh, but that's good in your eyes? Like, yeah, that, yeah. that gets a pass? Oh, that's... speaking so, of anime yeah, dialogue... We, we we're going to get there. Holy shit. What was the name of it? Like school okay, so, idols so let's live. Just contextualize. So Mad Men um sponsor the the prof- like the high stakes comp. Yeah, yeah. And in and, between um, a lot of the cosplayers. Yeah, because they're doing skits, like, they've got props and everything. Yeah, they're, they're have showing trailers, trailers and stuff. For different anime things on the big screen. So mm. we've got like Ghost in the Shell, New Movie and um, Assassination Classroom. Yeah. All great. But then they show one, and it's while the judges are doing their thing. It was an yeah. announcement. Which this we, we ex- didn't realise that this all the cosplay had finished. Yeah. And that this was going to be uh, kind of the full stop on the end of the compl- cosplay competition. So this clip starts, and it's schoolgirls, Japanese schoolgirls, animated, um, and they she's the girl in a bus, and she mm. dr- the bus just goes on for ages. And it's entirely in Japanese with no subtitles. Yeah, and then when she gets to school, she's talking. It's all in Japanese, no subtitles. And then uh, we find out that it's Love Live, I think. Love Live, it's a new series. They're school idols, and they're on an, like a seaside community. Mm-hmm. And then there's a song. And it's like a film clip of them singing this song and they're dancing. It's a cartoon. And it just goes on and on and on. Just when you think that that song is coming to an end, boom, another verse, you think, another bridge. You think Let's this song going. can't have any more parts. <coughs> but it has more parts. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not editing out your cough. I'm not. I'm raw dog in this episode. Oh, come on, man. Nah, you, you, that cough's in there. You can have a cough. People cough. Well, we're not fucking... This isn't for the Queen of England. Man, I had to get over the plague to come to Supernova this weekend. I'm allowed to cough. Do you want me to look at these Look at these waveforms? Do you want me to go through this <laughs> with a fine tooth comb, finding your cough? Hang on, you know what? If you're going to enjoy the cough so much, I'm going to do it again. Well, have a cough. <coughs> People cough. <coughs> That's fine. Now, I, if I was coughing, I'd edit it out, but I'm, <laughs> I'm close to the thing. Mm. Um, yeah, so, okay, so the song just keeps going on and on and on. People mm. are now talking, they're looking at their phones. They're, like, this is going five, six, seven minutes. Like, just, this is going an insane amount of time. This song is too long, and then um, it finishes, and we... And, and everyone breathes a sigh of relief. And then they start putting up slides saying, in English finally, saying, this is what it is, it's school idol, everyone wants to be a school idol, and, and you know, in, in Japan, like, if your school has idols then everyone you're know, a fancy famous school etc mm. and then we know there's nine of these girls yep then they put up a bio for one of the girls and it's got a blood type it's got like the food she this drawn cartoon girl mm. th- like she doesn't like steak but she likes eating um, bean paste or something mm. like you find out everything they are and then there's like another slide for this girl. Um, just a bit more information just yeah, in case you needed talking about that her to be hobbies and out, things yeah. and her personality. And then we realise, because it takes a, a, about a minute for these, these for all this information about this girl to come across. Mm. We've got eight more of these There to are go. nine of these girls. Mm. We're going to get information about all their blood type. Mm-hmm. And you think, part of you thinks, like, if I'm in a bus accident near these school girls, <laughs> then I'm going to know who's got the, the right blood type, who yeah. I should be looking at. Mm-hmm. But then you go, oh, or... But they're cartoon girls. Mm. So are they, you know, they've got drawn blood. Yeah. I don't mean drawn blood, drawn from their bodies. <laughs> I mean it's drawn with a with a pen. Now I've got a cough. <coughs> <coughs> oh, I, you know, 
we're like 55 minutes in and we still have to talk about Game of Thrones and it was such a big episode and I just don't want to. Mm. I'm not going to do it any justice. Can we just talk about all of Game of Thrones after the finale sure. next week? Okay. Will people forgive us if we just do this, like, an hour-long episode today? I think they will. I think yeah. they will. They're going to have to, because we just gonna I want to go and have some dinner. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that, that was the problem with the cosplay, and, um, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I like that, uh, I think at Oz Comic Con, they have, like, the cosplay parade, which is very, like, quick, get, get them on, pose, take your photos, get off, and I think they also have, like, a a cosplay active kind of thing where you can do your skits. So you can either agree to the skits and attend a particular uh, session or you can go, I don't need skits in my life and not attend that particular session and go to the other one where there's definitely no skits. This is me being a grumpy old man because I like the hosts. I think the hosts um, are charismatic, they're energised, they have a tough, really tough job. And they do it well, and I'm sure that any of the hosts that we saw over the course of the weekend, if I sat down and had a chat or a drink with them, I would think they were great people. Mm-hmm. But there is something about that approach, and they probably just do it because it, it works, mm. but that idea of coming out and going, are we excited? Who's excited? Everybody on this side, let us know how excited you are. I know that's like classic warming up the crowd. You want the crowd mm. to be warmed up and making noise and, and stuff before... But it's like, I'm not going to participate. It's like half past four in the afternoon. It's, it's like, We've been here all day. We just want to sit down. I want to have <laughs> real fucking responses to things. Mm. I want to have real emotions. You want me to be excited, show me something exciting. Mm. Excite me. Don't just tell me to be excited. I'm yeah. not just going to be excited because somebody said, hey, be excited. And that's also the kind of problem I have with those types of audience members. Like that guy that was just going nuts and performing in the row in front of us today yeah they did um or it's like it's just so pretend he's doing all this like big emotion stuff and it's like you're not really feeling that you're making a show and you're trying to make it about you and it, yeah. it's not like, like they let's were have showing a like genuine the, experience like the john cena memes on the screen and i think they're kind of funny but this guy did not and he made a big show of going oh nope 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 and then just like walking out of the theater and then crawling back like a minute later yeah and he kept doing it yeah, but then it was pretty and, annoying. And then there's the you could see that sort of feeling like he was like, yeah, people are really into this. People have really enjoyed what I've just done, mm. and it was like, I'm not, I'm not. It's not about you. That, that's not about you. That's what this is about. All my criticisms of like the way people behave and stuff at these things is it's not about you. It's like um, Supernova is is doing its best um, to put at least on the surface to put up signs and stuff about no you know not sexually harassing not bullying not saying stuff about people and we all heard throughout the weekend guys young guys saying gross stuff about the girls around yes. not to them but loud enough to their friends that you could hear oh the chicks here are really hot or all oh, the chicks are really ugly or something you know and all this sort of stuff mm. and i think that's the it feels like the first time that it's felt really gross prominent and gross, yeah. And it's like, fuck, would anybody be coming to Supernova to find a mate? And also, <laughs> like, it's not about you. No one's here to fucking to be attractive eyes. to you or yeah. to please you or to entertain you. Like, they're having their experience. Mm. Let, let everybody have their own genuine experience. Am I guilty of that then by saying that this person should not, like, behave better because he's having his genuine experience and I'm trying to push my experience? I don't know. Hmm. It just... But for me, like, I would never say something to, like, a a guy... I would, actually, if he was sitting next to me. But... Because that would affect my experience. (laughs) But, you know, when it stops being fun, I can leave. Yeah. Yeah, And 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 that's what we did. Yeah. And I just think that it doesn't... uh, Like, it doesn't cost you anything to just act like a respectful human being. Mm. At one of these events, you know, if you wouldn't carry on like a pork shop out in <laughs> out in the real world, don't fucking do it at Supernova because you know what? We're all just normal people too, and we're not going to put up with it at fucking Supernova. Well, that's where I feel always feel old is like when I saw the um, the Hannah B live thing, which is the you know the Game Grumps guy and, and Commander yeah. Holly. Um, it, they come out at the beginning, okay, you know, thank you everybody. Here are the rules. And the fact that you always get rules on how to behave. Mm. 
And um, this was interesting because, uh, you know, these are YouTube stars. So there wasn't the, like, no questions about money or religion mm. or things that come up usually. But it was like, um, there'll be no signings. There'll be no taking photos. There'll be no hugs. Uh, we don't want you to give them gifts. We don't want you to, you know, those kinds of things. Mm. And you just think, God, like, people, real people, real people that walk on their hind legs and stuff have to be told how to behave because they'll otherwise they'll just do whatever yeah and i think it's um different with those youtube stars and stuff as well because their audience has elevated them and they feel some kind of weird ownership over them yeah well they need to be reminded that they don't and they still need to act like normal people it was weird like i was i'm familiar with um russ's work because um i subscribed to game grumps i hadn't seen commander holly's stuff before so i had a bit of a look um yesterday as before we uh went and um yeah, like lots of videos of yeah, people just sending gifts, 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 gifts. I'm mm. unboxing stuff, you know, thank you, thank you. You don't need to do this, but oh, here's the weird thing you sent. Thank you. Oh, mm. and you think, God, like all that stuff's going to be out on the verge. <laughs> you know, how, how do you even accommodate that? But um, yeah, I don't know. I like stuff. I fucking love it when people send stuff. It's so cool. Yeah, it is pretty good. We've got um 4th of July episode next week, so we might actually utilise some of that stuff. Yeah, we were going to see um, Resurgence and review that this week, but uh, Independence Day, but um, we, we couldn't because you were not feeling well beforehand. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and some would say, well, you dodged a bullet, but uh, it would be pretty ideal to do it for july 4th absolutely yeah so mm. uh, maybe next week anyway stuff will happen um should we is that everything i think we've covered most things yeah i think that's pretty much it i'll have a gallery up with um with stuff probably by the time you are listening to this and uh yeah on the community page we'll probably put up maybe some photos of the things that we bought on instagram something like that yeah yeah look weird weird episode probably sounds like just totally negative and you just go well look okay you're old. Why go? Why do you go? No one makes you go. Why you go? No, because we do enjoy it. I'm like being, I'm being critical in a kind of how could it improve? Like what could be better, mm. etc. But um, we're going to be back there next year. Mm. I mean, you're always hoping that you're going to find that adventure, that you're going to find your narrative, that you can have that experience. You're going to meet that person or find that thing or, yeah, or whatever absolutely and obviously we're realistic that it's not up to the convention to deliver no it it's to not us. it's, up, it's up your to responsibility us to, to make our said. own adventure it's a buffet i'm not going in and sitting at a table and, and going get your chef to bring out the best thing mm. i'm looking at the salad bar i'm going well what do i want here mm. and uh yeah some I, I, years it's just all croutons and you go well you know this is not for me more cretins more like <laughs> uh, yeah i just didn't find it I just didn't find it this year. Mm. I just didn't find that thing which... And I don't know, I just didn't... Yeah, and it is me changing as well. Because I used to take more pictures for Instagram and stuff. And then I think, well, you've got it really covered. You're you're doing these really great professional pictures that people get to see later on mm. and, and really enjoy. And... um. I just don't want to be that old dude going around to, the, like, the younger people going, oh, can I yeah. get your photo and stuff? It's just because it's been spoiled because there's too much of it. Like, there are so many people doing that. Mm. And I just think, like, I just don't want to be perceived like that. And I just think, you know, we, if it's for our Facebook and everything, we've got it covered. You know, you're doing it, it's all good. Yeah, and it's kind of sad, isn't it, that it's so much easier for me to do it as a as a girl yeah, and yeah, like I just don't want to be that that dude. Yeah, and there's there is a lot of those dudes. And there's a lot of those there's dudes. Heaps of so them. I just been kind of put off, sort of doing that. Like mm. I, I feel more and more because of those sorts of comments and things that we hear. It's like just yeah, we'll just let them all. Everyone have their space and like do their thing. And I know, look, mm. people get chuffed. To, to get photos and stuff, mm. you know, they put in all that work and they, they want it to be appreciated and they want to be able to see photos themselves. But that's what I mean. We've got you to do that. You know, you're going to do mm. that. You're going to do it on a really great camera. They're going to get a better picture than um, they do normally. You, you're very, um, you, like, you don't have, I'm more awkward with them because I, I feel like, oh, you know, I'm kind of shy. I don't, I, I want to be non-threatening. Whereas you can just be matter of fact, get the job done, get, 
let's put the sword up here. Let's do this. Can you turn it around a bit? Yeah. Great. Move here. Thank you. Spot on. Done. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying, trying to bail from this podcast a little while ago and just kept going. Should we go? Let's go. Yeah, all right. Let's go. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, it was really great last week to uh, get Book Was Better back again, thanks to Courtney. Um, it won't be this week, unfortunately, because of Supernova's been all weekend. And, um, yeah, some of the stuff I was going to do with some, some guests and things uh, isn't going to pan out for this week. But... I don't know, being around all this stuff, it has re-energised me a bit in terms of, you know, you, you can do nothing or you can do something. And when you see the mm. amount of work that people put into, you know, like, yeah, fuck, look at those cosplay people. Hours yeah. and hours and hours, hundreds of hours of work for that showing and, and to get mm. that sort of recognition. Yeah. It's I a, think I can read a fucking book. Yeah, if you have the opportunity to put something out into the universe for people to enjoy, yeah. let's do it. So, um... I've just got to get into our group and and um, start organising people, get a schedule together, and mm. um, and then we'll stick to it once the schedule's in place. So uh, I will get Book and Was Better up and running. I've had my little break now. I've had my soul search, uh, my ass soul search, <laughs> uh, at Customs. The end. No, so thank you. Go to fruitlesspursuits.com. Uh, if you're a new listener, if you've just found us because of Supernova, then um, listen to some other stuff as well. Listen to some of the other episodes. Normally, we're doing movie reviews and stuff. Um, it, it, normally, uh, hopefully, we're a little... Well, no, sometimes we're funny. Sometimes we're serious. Sometimes we really talk about issues, and sometimes we, we, we have a bit of a laugh. Yeah. And we get a little bit silly. You never know what you're going to get, but... Uh, uh, I hope we're sort of a bit different to some of the other stuff that's out there. Certainly the other sort of really hive mind nerd, nerd stuff that's out there. Mm. Um, hopefully we think about things a, a little bit. Hopefully we wiggle it just a little bit. Mm. Wiggle it. Yeah. Just, yeah, anyway. Yeah, anyway, we've got to go. <laughs> Seriously, all I want to do now is uh, a zoom, 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 and then a boom. Is that how it goes? I can't remember. No, it was so long ago. No, we are going to go and uh, okay. you're probably going to have a wine. I'm going to go and smash I'm the not shit. actually going to have a I'm wine. I'm going to get in some KFC. I'm just going to put my head into a bucket uh, of fucking Colonel Sanders finest. You already made me feel bad that you're wading in uh, about a dozen empty wine bottles. <laughs> all all I've chair. eaten today is one churros. At the moment. One churros. I am starving. Let's go. Oh, what about Let's... those four Pringles? Hmm? Well, they weren't very satisfying. Well, just, well, I'll, just, I'll have to write just like to, this podcast. I'll have to write to Mister Pringle. Yes, anyway, just no. like this relationship. <laughs> well, you said it, buddy. Uh, well, roll, roll two for friendship. Fuck you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Goodbye. Bye bye.